Hey, you. Yeah, you. This game came out so long ago. Why are you reviewing it now? Uh, because I died like 56 million times. So this game could be considered and technically is a Metroidvania clone. This is probably my first complete attempt at one of these games. I've beaten the original Castlevania game, not that one, and the original Metroid. Symphony of the Night, everyone's favorite Castlevania game, I have on PlayStation and on the 360, but I haven't beaten it yet. It's fun, it's cool, I like the atmosphere, just haven't beaten it yet. We'll get to that. So... For those that don't know, a Metroidvania clone is essentially a non-linear platformer that you have to get certain items in order to progress and beat each boss, followed by optional items like, I don't know, health power-ups that are essentially just big band-aids and give you extended life. The game is actually based off of the recent movie with Tom Cruise. And you want to know how I know this? Because this is Russell Crowe. You can't escape everything by yelling and screaming, Mr. Crowe. The graphics in this game are nuts. I love the pixel graphics and the enemies that you encounter. Seriously, like, it's just all great. There's oddball slime dudes that I love and hate at the same time, and the bugs, and then even the bigger bugs, the flying ones. Honestly, it's weird that I like these basic enemies because they're not as fucking annoying as these fucking goddamn motherfucking brains. I fucking hate these things, especially when you die. You have to fucking kill them over and over again with like a fucking pea shooter and they just don't fucking die. I'm, I'm never going to 100% this game. It's impossible. Never die? Who do they think I am? A fucking Rothschild? The map layout is something along the lines of a castle or like a, the bunker in the other Metroidvania clones and all with different music and all with, with different feels, which I assume is just like all other Metroidvania games, but... Hey, I gotta say it for the sake of argument, because I actually did feel like I was progressing. This both hurts the game and helps it. On one hand, the music is great and the levels are cool looking. On the other hand, the music is tied to each part of the level. So if you get stuck, it's the same music looping over and over and over and over. Sometimes I just wanted to beat a certain area so I could stop listening to the same music. And I really don't think that that's something that you should buy a game for. These are some of my favorite tracks. Now comes the part where I'm gonna lose most of my audience because you've either tuned into some other YouTube video or you're gonna go masturbate to some monkey on water skis. I actually can't believe how old this video is. Or your like new YouTube community who all they do is use it for memes. Yeah, boy! <laughs> If you're still here, that must mean you want to know more about the game. I may have touched on this before, but the main story isn't that amazing. It's just a non-linear platformer, seriously. The main baddie is a mummy named Ahmet that has risen to take control over the world, and your task is essentially to chase her down and beat her. But Tom Cruise had to do that in the movie. So, picture like Superman fighting General Zod in the movie Man of Steel, and your job is like the soldier guy sweeping up the rubble. Did you know the Rothschild family is like one of the most wealthiest families in the world? And one that just died last year had something in the ballpark of like 17 heart surgeries and he died at like the age of 105? Google it. The game breaks down into essentially a hide and go find items game and is broken up by boss sections. Here's the list of them all. Giant Spider, Arachnid Dude. Fred the T-Rex, Yu-Gi-Oh's Dark Magician, the bug from every Egyptian movie ever, and then Ahmet mixed with the rest of the hands and body from Super Smash Brothers. And let me tell you something here, kitty boy. You don't fuck with Fred, alright? You don't mess with the Rex. I aimlessly played this game not knowing what was going on for a while, and actually beat the spider first go, no problem. Fred, man. Oh, don't even get me started on this boss. I didn't go after any extra health, 
I didn't get any extra guns. I didn't do anything. And that was my mistake. Do not go after Fred without anything less than three bars or extra guns. I even backtracked and then even had to grind for health balls to drop by killing enemies repeatedly and going and back getting my undead agent and then going to kill him. This part of the game along with dying and losing your gear when you die was something that I didn't mind that much but it was so long and drawn out. It really frustrated me and a lot of players hated it a lot. Dark Magician isn't too bad because by the time I got to this guy I was certain to look around for all the gear and all the power-ups after having to do that with Fred. Okay, so of all the bosses, the Scarab was actually pretty fun to me. It had a mechanic of needing to go up, like a scrolling up mechanic, and it was so different than the rest of the game, I actually really enjoyed it. He's got this wicked-ass laser, ass laser, that if I ever had a genie grant me a superpower, I might go for it. And it was an extended tough but fair boss fight. Even if it was a little long. Now I'm going to tell you straight here, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. The last boss sucks. Like, no, seriously. By the time you get to the boss, you're basically maxed. Gear, guns, brains with all the other bosses, man. Don't fuck with Fred. It's meant to say the least. I wanted something more action-packed or time-limited. He definitely looks cool and the music is awesome, but in hindsight, Fred the T-Rex gave me the most grief and was probably the most challenging boss. So all in all, not a bad time with this one. It was a bit of a slog in the end, but you know. I can feel that this game is going to be a speed run gold mine, and I'm not always a fan of these games. Some games are super wicked for this. Coming full circle, I see on Twitch and YouTube that there's some sort of charity event that they try to speedrun as many games in 24 hours, and all proceeds go to charity. This one here is uh, the original Castlevania, and it's, I mean, a lot of people try to speedrun that game. I think a lot of it, to me, is that games that you're supposed to have a thrilling and fun and paced out experience are ruined by glitches and tricks, and it's just, it's not something I like. I didn't finish it, but I saw a video on YouTube once where a guy beat Skyrim in literally 25 minutes. It was nuts. Kudos for the speed, but that game isn't designed to be speedrun, and that's what I'm talking about. I think a huge part of me dislikes this because I get ripped out of the experience, and I'm always thinking, oh yeah, there's someone that's going to beat this way faster than me. So yeah, I mean, that's my two cents on the game. It's a pretty good movie tie-in, and you know what? Overall, it's not that bad of experience. Great atmosphere, pretty good music, not the best. And honestly, I might have the balls to go beat Symphony of the Night now. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets!